Hello everyone, my name is Taylor. And I am Ray. And we're taking longer and longer for a new update, yes. Well, I mean, not longer and longer in the relative sense, we're not like six months late. It is all just a matter of sliding, Ray, yes. Well, we've actually got kind of a long cutscene this time. You know, the thing about this is that although it may not look like much, it gets really tedious the longer these cutscenes go. Ray, Ray, you are breaking the rule of entertainment. The audience is not supposed to see the strings attached to the puppets. Now, audience. I have to inform you, there is work that goes into producing entertainment. Oh, ah. You've torn right. the mask off, Ray. It's it's now they just know that everything is terrible. Well, it's not that everything is terrible. Uh the thing is is that, you know, you have to go through and you watch these cutscenes over and over again, you look for little snips to clip. Uh, but one thing I wanted to say, and the reason I actually wanted to bring it up, is because I spent so much time looking at these cutscenes, you start to really appreciate how they're put together. And uh, one thing I gotta say is, although the camera's not very good in the actual game while you're playing, I've got to appreciate how they designed the cinematics. Like, it's not the first time that games tried to combine a cinematic experience with your gameplay. They used to do these FMV things that were popular on computers because they could fit more space onto a disc or force you to install multiple floppy disks of data onto your computer. But uh, the PS2 era was kind of around when they started to do pre-rendered cutscenes using the models that were already in the game. Of course, they did this kind of with the PS1 too, but the graphics really weren't there yet, so this was around when it first started to get to be mainstream and common. And I was just noticing that they do a lot of really interesting camera shots, like they use a lot of dominant angles when a character has the advantage and in information over someone else. Like, you don't really get to see this in the way that we redesign things, because I'm not as meticulous about all that. But they follow the 180 rule. Like, I don't know, it's just, like... Good camera work, I guess. Well, for all you know about camera work. Okay, yes, to me, who is not especially proficient with the camera, it looks good. Right, your favorite art is when they make giant novelty versions of everyday objects, yes. Okay, you know what? A giant hamburger is an amazing work of art. Somebody had to put a lot of time and effort into making that, and their skill is severely underappreciated. I'm just saying, yes, it was pretty much the dumbest trip to the museum ever. They had a giant hamburger at the museum? No, yes. One time we went to the museum, and then afterward we went to this fast food place that had a giant hamburger on top of it, yes. And Ray got the... I mean, I was in the mood, we'd been looking at art all day, and I thought to myself, you know, someone put a lot of work into that hamburger. Someone put a lot of work into the hamburger, yes. No one thinks about the guy who builds the hamburger. Ray would not let this go, yes. Because you kept making fun of me for appreciating the guy who does the hamburger. Well, that is because when we were at the art place, we saw sculptures of the human form made from stone. Someone spent hours on this. Someone spent hours on the hamburger. But you, you said nothing about the stone sculptures, yes. Yet well, you appreciate the hamburger! Here I stood, holding the heart of my indignant king, which I'd ripped out with my bare hands in a moment of blind rage. I'd killed so many people, the reality of that hadn't really set in. Reviving Janos might be the first and only time I'd ever given life to anyone. Where am I? Why does my chest hurt so much? Oh my god, I'm a dad! What? Raziel! Yeah, nothing, I just got a little caught up in the moment. Last thing I remember, I was fighting a human version of you and you stabbed me in the chest. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I was kind of caught up in the moment then too. And not really myself. We have to get you the Reaver, Raziel. Destiny ordains it. <laughs> I don't think I am who you think I am. Destiny has ordained nothing for me short of eternal suffering. I'm sorry, I'm not up to speed. Where are we? We're in Vorador's mansion. Oh, Vorador, thank God. He's dead. How long have I been out? About 500 years. 500 years?! Yeah, or like a trillion knock-knock jokes in time. It passes like a snap once the starvation really sinks its roots How in. have I been dead for 500 years?! How exactly does death for your people work anyway? If I cut off your head, then put it back on, would you be okay? Let's not focus on that. I mean, you obviously don't need oxygen or blood, so stealing your heart seems symbolic, but they could have taken any vital organ for all it seems Razio, to matter. I'd like to focus on getting you the reaver. Do you know where it is? Yep. It's right here. Oh, oh, good lord. It's not supposed to do that, is it? Good lord! Yeah, and it wasn't supposed to break, either. It's not supposed to do any of this! Do you know why it would do any of this? Nay! Hey, why didn't you just follow the prophecy? I've been trying, but it's not fair if you wrote multiple prophecies predicting different things. Well, sure. We predicted Redeemer and Destroyer, but we knew that once you saw our superior ideological way of thinking, that you'd have no choice but to agree. Oh, god damn it! this whole time it's been nothing but conceit? 
Everyone is conceited in the righteousness of their own lifestyles. What are you, five years old? How do you think the world works? Don't tell me you feel sympathy for the Hilden. You know, the picture stories in the temples didn't really elaborate your justification for the genocide. Come with me. I'll take you to a place that should explain everything. Where are we now? The Vampire Citadel. It survived generations of warfare against the Hilden. Who, again, you genocided because... I can see the pillars are rotten. This isn't a good sign. They're beyond redemption. Your hero is a self-absorbed idiot. As long as one self-absorbed idiot remains, there is hope, Raziel. For who? You're the last of your race. Why are we continuing to punish the Hilden past the lifespan of the last people to know about them? Because years of torment have probably driven them to mindless, murderous insanity for one. You're really not reinforcing the whole vampires are the good guys angle. Raziel, there's no time to get into specifics. Well, I'd say we have all the time, but the last person who knew how to operate the time machine died recently, so... Then we should move swiftly. I revived you for one thing, to explain all the mysteries. I'm not moving my feet until you start moving your mouth. Alright, fine. The Hilden separated us from our good, from the purifying cycle of death and rebirth. You mean the Elder Squid? From the Wheel of Fate. The Elder Squid. No, you've been misinformed. By who? Your god? I've talked to him, he's a giant squid. Okay, I'm not sure who you've been talking to, but it wasn't our god. Hub of the wheel, purifying cycle of death and rebirth. Knock knock, banana! I think there may be some confusion. Oh god. It just occurred to me I might know more than everyone. Raziel? No. Yes! I brought you back and you're confused about everything? I have more information than you! Oh god, Cain died for no reason! Whoever this Cain person is, I assure you, I was schooled in the ancient prophecy! You're as useless as Mortanius! I am no such thing! Raziel, take this key to the inner sanctum of the citadel. There, everything will be revealed. Why? What's there? A test. Oh, f*** you! Look, if the prophecy is correct, you should be fine. And if it isn't, then good luck and goodbye. Okay, so before we were interrupted by the game that we're supposed to be doing our actual commentary on, I just wanted to point out that everyone already appreciates stone sculptures for what they are. Like, that's why they're in the museum. No one thinks about the guy who built a giant novelty hamburger for a fast food place. Well, that's because he did it all for a corporate thing. So? Lots of artists did things for corporate things, like the Sistine Chapel was only made because the church had lots of money. <laughs> Do you think there's like a... Like a Michelangelo of, uh, of novelty food items? That guy who says, I'm gonna be known across the world for my giant food items? You know what? Maybe when he's young and first starting out, that's how he thought. But when he gets older, okay, so he loses faith in the hope that he's gonna get famous for his giant novelty food items. Well, you, you realize that all of your work is tainted by the perception of the world, and, and media is too big anymore. People can go onto YouTube, it's oversaturated. A kid can just film himself eating laundry detergent and get a zillion views. But your giant novelty food items are nothing. Oh, so now YouTube is ruining giant food art. That's what you're saying? Yes, friggin' YouTube. No, actually, I was reading that uh, Google's trying to make their home device. They're using their home device to discriminate against giant food items? No, no, no it's like a thing, that, like Alexa, where you're like, Alexa, find me a giant hamburger place. And it's uh, Alexa. It's not Alexa, right? Yes. Oh, it's no, it's not. It's Alexa. I think it's Alexa. Anyway, the point is they're trying to make a thing like Alexa or Siri or uh, uh, Siri or Alexis or whatever. And Google has demonstrated that their robots do not understand quality, and they're not going to properly appreciate giant hamburgers either. <laughs> what have we foresaw in the name of convenience? What have we foresaw indeed? This, this was the future that sci-fi novels didn't tell us we were headed for. A world in which giant hamburgers no longer attract people to food stands. You know, it is going to be kind of interesting, though, when all the recommendations for all the businesses are automated. We're going to basically see SEO gaming, but in the real world. Oh my gosh. That would be terrible. Like, we're going to... I mean, like, think about, like, YouTube thumbnails. But on billboards. On the Elsa Frozen, eat poop popsicles, yes! <laughs> well, okay, kids drive a lot of what works on YouTube because they'll click on anything, but I feel like grocery stores are not going to be able to get away with that. You say that now, but pretty soon we're all going to be eating Anna Elsa Frozen Spider-Man pregnancy poop buried alive popsicles! <laughs> 
All right, just to recap, in case you're watching this video from the future and this is no longer relevant news, uh, recently to this video, one of the best ways to get big on YouTube was to make your video about something that the search engine or the Google bots recognized and wanted to promote. I mean, that is still currently how you do things. Right, well, it's still currently how you do things, but at the time, Anna Elsa Frozen Pregnancy Buried Alive, these kind of insane word mashes with popular characters, that was the thing. For kids, at least. You may not have seen this as adults. Can you imagine? Like, Trick Cereal replacing their mascot with Elsa from Frozen eating poop and being pregnant, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, I can't imagine that. Like, seeing that on cereal boxes <laughs> at the grocery store. Oh my god, I can't... You know, if... if... Well, you know, Sci-fi writers had seen the future. Well, the best part is that that sort of thing, I don't think it would really change society to make it worse. It would just make it so much dumber. <laughs> I, well, I mean, like, this is targeted at kids. Yeah, but it's not going to fundamentally change the way that people do things. Like, I think that, that we're all more resilient than that. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, what if you grew up in an environment where burying people alive and eating poop was a highly encouraged behavior? It's not going to change anyone. We can't do that and be okay, so it just wouldn't change society enough. Elder Squid. I should have figured you'd be at the root of the vampire's answers to my questions. Well, of course, Raziel. I'm at the root of all questions. Especially the important ones, like, for example, knock knock! I'm really surprised the vampires killed themselves to be with you. I would think that it would go the other way around. Raziel. Banana. Banana, banana, banana. But you know what I find interesting? I have never noticed you exert your will over the physical world before. What's going on here, Elder Squid? What's so important that you need to be here? What's so important that you need to be here, Raziel? You've killed Cain and done my bidding, and I am most pleased with you. Oh, the only thing you're pleased with is when you've glutted yourself on living souls. You're nothing but a giant, miserable tapeworm. You can't be pleased with anything. Oh. Oh, now that's stuck. Well, fine, Raziel. I'll let you in on the secret. It's a trap. <laughs> now, now, is that reverse psychology, or, or am I actually about to trap you? I guess you'll have to find out. At a certain point, do you even have to use reverse psychology on Raziel? It seems like he'll just go along with whatever because he does things. Look, Raziel is committed, if nothing else. He's not committed. He totally went back on killing Cain until later. Well, I mean, he's committed to just, like, being disagreeable. <laughs> Add that to the lore of the Raziel, yes. He travels through time, and if he overhears a political conversation, he will interject. Just to disagree. My master seemed keen to extinguish the purifying fire of the spirit form. Perhaps the weaver loosened his grip. So, okay, that was uh, out of place. Like, we don't normally get just voiceovers during the game, and it'll happen again. And I have a couple of theories on why it happened. First one is I assume that they ran out of animation budget, so they just stopped doing animation. Second theory is that maybe during playtesting, players were confused, so they were like, oh shoot, get Michael Bell in here and have him do another line. I mean, do you really think people didn't think to hit the Elder Squid with the Reaver? I mean, I don't know, it would have been my instinct. Hitting the Elder Squid with the Reaver didn't do anything to him before, yes. Yeah, it is actually weird that this is the one and only time that it seems to bother him. Like, he stops you and creates doorways with his tentacles in the past, but he doesn't care if you slice him up. Well, maybe it works this time because he's physically exerting himself? So he's got, like, a more material presence? See, but, I, I mean, that opens a lot of questions, doesn't it? Why doesn't the Reaver bother him before? Yes. The Reaver has a spectral component. It should be able to attack him both physically and spiritually. Well, maybe the Reaver is powered up because it's got all the elements in it. Or maybe this particular forge is weakening the Elder Squid. That, actually, probably, this is supposed to be the Purity Forge, so maybe it is making the Elder Squid weak somehow. But then, why did the vampires build it if the squid is their god? Yes. See, that's another thing, and why we really needed another game to answer some of these questions. Did the ancient race know the Elder Squid was actually a parasite? They're trying to stop him, maybe? If Raziel would have just gone back in time further enough to talk to the ancient race. Yeah, I mean, it would answer all the questions, but then all the questions would be answered and the mystery would be gone. Curse you, rules of fiction. That's assuming the ancient race even knew anything, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, we could have at least found out what the ancient race didn't know if they didn't know anything. They didn't know Jack. Janos doesn't know Jack. We don't learn anything from them. Yes. Well, that may be. You know, at least it would be good to confirm, because then you're in uncharted territory. But you know what would be cool? If they had a game where you went back in time, and then you found out that you were adversarial to the ancient race because they worshipped the Elder Squid. And then you would battle the ancient vampires and stuff. 
Oh, I, I've got a no-brainer on what they call that one. Legacy of Cain Rebellion. You can't control me, Grandpa. I'm my own vampire guy. Okay, so anyway, here is where we're gonna go ahead and stop for now. Uh, we're about done with this thing, but there's a bunch of cutscenes afterward, and those are time-consuming to do. So, thanks for playing with us, everybody. And remember, it's tough to make it on YouTube, so your support on Patreon really helps us out. Uh, or if you just like to share our videos or whatever, that's also great, too. Otherwise, you have a good day.